about the irreversible stage of the shock, which is basically the third stage of shock. So far, we have discussed the compensated or known uh, progressive stage of shock, then the uh, decompensated or uh, progressive stage of shock, and finally, it's the irreversible stage of shock. By now, you all must know, uh, as we have discussed again and again in our previous lectures, that shock is a condition in which the blood supply is inadequate or the supply of nutrients like oxygen, glucose and uh, minerals etc. is inadequate to fulfill the demands of all the cells of the different tissues. So, in, cardiac, in a shock, basically the cardiac output may or may not be normal and there are uh, three main stages of shock. Two of the stages have been discussed in detail and finally, this is the irreversible stage of shock. <clears throat> now, the, the, the first stage, the non-progressive shock, was a stage in which the body's uh, own reflexes or the compensatory mechanisms could reverse uh, the, the shock and the patient could recover. In the progressive uh, stage, the, the shock was basically progressing and <clears throat> any external help or treatment could reverse the shock. But once the irreversible stage of shock has reached, then even the external help or even the, the treatment provided cannot reverse the shock. Now with the help of this diagram, we are going to demonstrate that how once the progressive stage has been converted into the irreversible stage of shock, then the treatment won't be helpful. Suppose for example, this is a patient with normal 100% of the cardiac output. This, this graph is showing the cardiac output on the y-axis and this is showing the 100% of cardiac output here it's 75% of the normal, it's 50% of normal, 25% of the normal. <clears throat> here it's the time. <clears throat> Now at this level, hemorrhage has occurred. Hemorrhage has occurred, H for hemorrhage. And at this point, basically the shock, the, the, the cardiac output has suddenly fallen. The cardiac output has suddenly fallen due to the hemorrhage. Now, as, the, uh, as soon as the cardiac output falls, the, the patient, the initial um, stage of the, uh, the initial stage of the shock will be a non-progressive. If the hemorrhage is small, it will not fall down. There will be not much uh, fall in the cardiac output. There will be a small fall in cardiac output and the, it will recover it on its own or the body will recover it on its own. <clears throat> but if the hemorrhage is huge and there is a big fall in the cardiac output due to a big hemorrhage or a lot of blood has been lost, then there will be a big fall in the cardiac output and the body and the patient can directly enter into the progressive stage. Here we see it's the progressive stage here. <clears throat> here it's the progressive stage and it is basically this, the patient is going into this progressive stage progressively, slowly and gradually with the passage of time. Now at 30 minutes, the patient has entered this progressive stage and is in this progressive stage till around this time, around 60 minutes. Now at, from this point, Till this point, as long as the patient is in the progressive stage, any treatment, any treatment provided to the patient can recover the shock. But once this point has been crossed, once this point has been crossed and the patient will enter the irreversible stage, the patient will enter the irreversible stage. Now at this point onward, you can see the patient has basically entered the irreversible stage. <clears throat> now. The patient was in this progressive stage for quite a long time, from like 30 minutes of time to around 60 minutes of time, till this time. Now here, because the shock was very big and uh, no help was provided at this time, this slight increase in the cardiac output may be due to the compensatory processes, but they may not be sufficient and the fall in cardiac output is so large and the shock is so big that they are unable to recover the patient. So the cardiac output has fallen once again and here at this time it has entered the irreversible stage. Now as we discussed that once a patient has entered the irreversible, irreversible stage of shock, then even if a treatment is provided, even if a treatment is provided at this time, it may, it may help to increase the cardiac output, the cardiac output, you see, at this point, if treatment is provided in the irreversible stage, it may help in increasing the cardiac output, but as the irreversible point has been crossed at this level, so the deteriorative changes has occurred so much in the uh, in the body that the patient is not able to recover even with the treatment. Even with the treatment, the patient will not recover. Although the cardiac output has slightly increased to the normal level, but slowly and gradually it has fallen one fallen once again to the zero level. So here the cardiac output is normal. Here the hemorrhage has occurred at this point, and at this point the the cardiac output starts falling down. It has fallen to this point immediately at this level. <clears throat> now, as soon as the cardiac output has reached this level, the, the patient basically enters into the progressive shock in, in this point, in this time, from 30 minutes till 60 minutes, it, it, within this duration, the patient is in the progressive stage of shock. The patient is in progressive stage of shock. Any provide any treatment provided during this time may help to recover the patient, may help to recover the patient. But once this point has been crossed and the irreversible, now this is basically the irreversible stage. This is the irreversible stage of shock. 
once the patient has entered this level, now the patient cannot recover and the, the cardiac output will go to zero. The cardiac output will become zero and the patient will die. But if sometimes, sometimes, even if treatment is given in the irreversible stage and it may be able to recover this cardiac output to the normal level, but ultimately it will come down again to the zero level and the patient may survive a bit longer time like uh, instead of dying at this point, the patient may die at this point, but ultimately the result will be the same. The mortality, there will be no effect on mortality. Now why this thing uh, occurs, now why the treatment provided in the irreversible stage is not helpful and uh, although it is it is bringing back the cardiac output to the normal from this point till this point it is bringing but it falls again because a lot of deteriorative changes has occurred in the muscle cells of the heart for example. The deteriorative changes may have occurred in all the cells but especially when deteriorative changes once they have occurred in the heart then even if the volume even if the volume which was basically lost due to hemorrhage, even if it is recovered with the treatment, the heart muscles have been damaged so much that they are unable to maintain the cardiac output at this level and the cardiac output falls down. So basically initially the, the due to hemorrhage the cardiac output decreases but at this point if the patient has deteriorated, the, now the cells have so much deteriorated, so much damage has occurred that if this lost volume is even provided here at this point it won't be helpful because of this deteriorative changes that has occurred throughout the body but especially in the heart muscles especially in the muscle cells of the heart because the heart is very much important all the cells of the body are important but the heart is very important because it is not only consuming the energy itself but it is also helping to provide blood and nutrients to all the tissues of the body so if the muscles the muscle cells of the heart are damaged then how are they going to pump even if the, the treatment is provided even if the blood is provided if uh, a transfusion is done still the heart won't be able to pump uh, sufficient blood to to keep the patient alive now the second thing is that there is destructive enzymes released there is release of destructive enzyme so even uh, these both of these things are interconnected like once there is decreased supply of oxygen glucose and uh, sodium potassium potassium and other nutrients all these factors which we have discussed in detail in the progressive shock all these factors basically contribute in the deterioration of cells the cells are basically unable to these uh, to perform their normal activities because of the release of destructive enzymes and these destructive enzymes basically play a big role in deterioration and destruction of the cells and they are now unable to perform their duties now another factor is acidosis due to shock severe shock now if the patient remains in shock till this time and treatment is not provided in time now this thing proves that if timely treatment is given at this point or this point before allowing now the patient can recover very well but if it is delayed till the irreversible stage then treatment is useless it so why the treatment is useless these are the factors which make the which makes the treatment useless the de deteriorative changes that are occurring in the cells some of them are due to the lack of glucose some of them are due to the lack of oxygen some of them are due to the release of enzymes some deteriorative changes are due to the uh, acidosis and these are the factors which we have discussed in detail in the progressive shock now with all uh, with all these factors coming into play with all these factors the normal cardiac output can't reverse these changes now the cardiac output here is normal at this point the cardiac output is almost 100% of the normal but as we discussed that this cardiac output is with the help of the external transfusion of the blood which was lost in the hemorrhage but at this point at this point only transfusion will not be helpful because the cells have been destroyed because the cells are acidotic because there is a lot of destructive enzymes in the cells and especially in the heart muscles so they won't be able the heart won't be able to maintain normal cardiac output and the normal cardiac output even if it is achieved it will not be able to reverse these changes it will not be able to reverse these changes and it is labeled as irreversible stage of shock now another important factor which is uh, uh, which basically plays an important role in the irreversible stage of shock is the depletion of high energy creatinine phosphate and adenosine triphosphate uh, com uh, compounds there is de there is depletion of high energy compounds there is depletion of high energy compound especially there is depletion of creatinine creatine phosphate now creatine phosphate plays an important role and another thing is adenosine triphosphate atp now when uh, when energy is released from atp it leads to the formation of adp and uh, it then uh, it may lead to the formation of amp and then for finally it may lead to the formation of adenosine adenosine triphosphate adenosine diphosphate adenosine monophosphate and finally the formation of adenosine now when adenosine is lost into the tissue there is decreased formation of atp there is decreased formation or the rate of formation of atp is decreased now the cells of the body they have decreased 
energy they have decreased energy and the, there is depletion of all the high energy compounds and all the reserves are gone so the cells are not able to perform their functions normally after this point after reaching the irreversible stage the cells are not able to perform their normal functions the heart cells the heart muscles cannot pump the heart cannot properly pump the liver cannot properly detoxify the in the toxins the lungs cannot properly function and edema can occur similarly the intestinal muscles cannot properly function so there is loss of high energy uh, compounds so when there is no energy the cells cannot function properly and on top of that there is release of enzymes there is deterioration of uh, cells and there is acidosis all these factors uh, basically lead to the a stage in which the the shock become irreversible even if the external help is provided so to summarize the shock shock has three stages the first stage is basically the uh, non progressive or at just at the point of hemorrhage if uh, if there is a small hemorrhage then we will call it as a non progressive shock and it will recover on its own without treatment then the second stage is the progressive sh uh, shock in the progressive shock there is the deterioration is going on and the body is basically deteriorating and it is going towards an irreversible stage but if treatment timely treatment is provided at this stage in the progressive shock the patient can recover the shock can be recovered and finally there is irreversible stage in which even treatment will not be helpful so that's all about irreversible shock thanks a lot for watching the video